Nectar collectors suck, and they used to be one of my favorite ways to dab. There's so many different types of devices or dab rigs that you can use, so many different nail setups that you can use to dab or get high. And I used to be a huge fan of nectar collectors. They were like one of my favorite ways to dab for like over a year. I exclusively used nectar collectors. I collected a bunch of different types of them. I even got all my friends hooked on nectar collectors. There was a brand or is a brand called Honey Straw. I'd pick up at a head shop in Colorado. This is this place I'd go to. It was near one of the dispensaries. Dispensaries I'd worked at. I usually go there on my lunch break. I'd get like an hour break. So you spend 20, 30 minutes eating and getting high in your car. And then maybe the other 20, 30 minutes checking out glass at this head shop. Cool shop in Colorado Springs called Blown Head Shop. I think they've renamed to like Bomb Head Shop or they're part of a chain now or something. But I used to buy a ton of honey straws from there. I'd show them off on like Instagram and stuff. And then my friends would hit me up. Yo, how do I get one of those? And years ago, head shops in a lot of places didn't carry all these devices. And there weren't as many online stores. You could order from places, but some people were still sketchy out about it so i literally just buy my friends honey straws i got them this one and this one these are this is the honey straw mini and this is the honey straw regular size i used to just buy a ton of these it's a little custom mouthpiece i started using i don't actually have nails for these these are just the bodies i have several of them and i don't even really use them anymore but it's kind of like a little throwback to me this is a little colorado springs locally blown one I'm not even sure who the artist is but i have so many different honey straws or nectar collectors it used to be my number one favorite way to dab i stopped using any kind of regular dish nail or banger because I was like, bro, it's all about honey straws. But honey straws or nectar collectors taught me bad dabbing habits. I attribute a lot of my early bad dabbing habits to using a honey straw. And what I mean by this is they don't have any surface area where you concentrate to hang out. Most people, when they use a honey straw or a dab straw, they end up taking a hot dab just because there's not a lot of surface area for your concentrate to vaporize on. So you usually end up doing a quicker, shorter hit. And oftentimes you need to do it at a higher temperature temperature to get any proper vapor. Most of the reason I think dab straws suck are related to torch based dab straws. I actually do have a couple of electric nectar collectors here, the little dip device. I have a couple products by them. I have the human sucks here. These are actually decent. And one of the reasons why is because you're holding a button to keep the tip hot. Some of the little cheaper ones might not maintain a specific temperature. You might get a ramping temperature effect, but you're able to keep the heat going. You're able to reapply it, take it away, reapply it. When you torch a nail or when you torch a honey straw tip, as soon as you stop torching it, the heat is just leaving it. And most of these nails, they don't hold a lot of heat anyway. They're smaller and they typically don't have a lot of surface area. When you dab, you want your concentrate to sit on the heated surface and produce vapor. It can take 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds. It's never instant unless you're doing it too hot. But with a honey straw, you don't have any surface area for the oil to vaporize. So what you do with something like this is you hold the heated tip as close as you can to the wax to try to vaporize it there. Most people, when they hit these, they use them like a straw. I think the name honey straw is kind of a bad one because it gives people the thought that they're really sucking on it like a straw. You shouldn't suck on your dab straw like a real straw. It should be the lightest pull you possibly can. You essentially want to be able to see the vapor produce and after it's producing, lightly pull that vapor in. Most people pull too hard and they end up melting the wax and just sucking the wax into their device and just loading it up with reclaim. I literally used to fill this bad boy up with, re this thing would get so full. I would just soak this whole thing in a bag with ISO. This is the mini one. I used to use this all the time. This was my portable dab rig. I used to go on hikes and we'd set up a little spot and sesh out in nature. And I used this a lot. It was a little more convenient than the big one. And this really, I think the mouthpiece would typically come out to here. They, they would come with a titanium tip or a quartz tip. I actually don't have any tips right now. I don't plan on using these, but I did end up using a a little male to male joint here to alter the mouthpiece. This is one of the things that kind of helped me get into the better habits of dabbing. You see with the straight on tip, I wasn't able to see the vapor producing, wasn't able to see the wax melting. So I got this angle tip so I could at least get a little bit of an angle on it. And they actually at the head shop started recommending people buy these because there was a lot of people having issues because the mouthpiece was so long. They were having issues like seeing their dab. A lot of people were just sucking it up. Really the main issue is the nail tip. It doesn't have like a flat surface area it doesn't have a spot for the oil to sit and produce vapor over time. There's just not enough time in a lot of cases. A dab is a slow process. If you put it on a hot nail at a proper temperature, it should melt slowly. Then you'll see it bubble and produce vapor. You don't see vapor instantly when you put a dab on a properly heated nail, but you should be doing cold starts anyway, right? Still, even in that process, you see the wax melt slowly. You see the vapor produce slowly. It's not an instantaneous thing. So when you're using a dab straw, you have to take that in mind. I really don't use these anymore 
anymore. I don't even use the electronic ones that much. Just the whole method, the lack of surface area for the concentrate to sit on means you're always going to do smaller dabs or you're going to do them at a higher temperature. I think really the only thing that I use these for, sometimes the portability is nice, but usually when you get like a container of crumble or something, sometimes wax containers, you don't scoop it all out. You just see like a bunch of it lined on the inside. There's, crumble usually does this a lot, but there's some other concentrates. Where I'm like, shit, there's so much in there, but I can't scoop it out with a scooper. Sticking in a heated tip on a dab straw usually kind of melts through all that. But I've seen so many people dab weirdly with honey straws, nectar collectors. They slide the tip through a bunch of concentrate, melting so much. But some people think they're doing huge dabs with a nectar collector, and they're really just melting a ton of wax and sucking it into the straw. So torch and nail nectar collectors, honey straws, probably retired for me. I don't really see myself using too many more of those. Electronic ones, they're pretty cool, but they're not gonna give me a nice, big, flavorful dab. It's really more for like a quick little sip, a quick little one hit. When I dab on my Puffco, for example, I have the chamber set to stay heated for about a minute or so, sometimes a minute, five or 10 seconds, and I'm producing vapor the whole time. You can't really do a minute long, low temp dab with something like this. You're just gonna end up sucking wax into the device. The tips only stay heated to once you pull it past that, it's inside and there's no more way for your wax to, to vaporize. In some cases, in some devices, especially the electronic ones, you gotta be careful because if you do suck wax into it, sometimes holding that tip down, heating it up will cause that wax that got sucked in to melt and drip out. I've had many instances where I've just dripped really hot wax on my leg. I have a couple of burns on the tops of my thighs just from wax dripping out and me wearing short shorts. Either way, I still got cool stuff in my glass collection that reminds me of years ago. And I was actually session with somebody using one of those DTV four or five, whatever it was. And we were able to put the body of one of these on top of it and get water percolation through their dab pen that we were using or with dab device. It's not really a pen. It's like a big, big atomizer on a battery. Either way, you should come sesh with me on Twitch. I'm probably live and getting high right now. Come smoke with me over there. And if you want to hear more of my thoughts on the best way to dab, you should check out this video. I break down my favorite way of dabbing. Have a lit day.